the roots of a human being lie in the future. Prophecy counts for more than memory. But memory informs prophecy. In our civilization, the dominant beliefs have taught us that the supreme good lies in the future. The sacred version of these beliefs tells us that the supreme good is our salvation, lying beyond historical time. The profane version of the beliefs teaches us that the highest good is the transformation of society that will raise our powers and give us a greater life. But one way or another, the good is not now. The good is later. A consequence of this attitude to the world is that the present always seems defective. We are estranged from the present and not at home in the world. But a problem results from this consequence. The present is really all we have. All we ever have is right now, life lived in the present moment. Under the aegis of these commanding beliefs, we are alienated from the only thing we have for sure, which is life right now. There are two false solutions to this problem. One false solution is to repudiate the orientation to the future and to reconcile ourselves to the present circumstance. We should not accept this response because it is a denial of a defining attribute of our humanity. We are embodied in dying organisms and shaped by the social and conceptual context that we inhabit. They make us who we are. But there is always more in us in each of us individually and in all of us collectively than there is or ever can be in them. They are finite with respect to us and we are infinite with respect to them. There is in us a surfeit of experience, of vision, of capacity that indefinitely exceeds all these limited circumstances in which we live our lives. If we deny this fact about ourselves, we violate our own humanity and cut off the possibility of rising to a higher life. Without a tension between engagement and transcendence, between connection with the circumstance and resistance to it, we cease to be fully human. The other false response to the experience of estrangement, of estrangement from the good of life right now, is the search for power, what you might call Prometheanism. Prometheanism begins in the denial of the ineradicable flaws in human existence, that we are doomed to die, 
that we are groundless and unable to grasp the framework of our existence, and that we are insatiable, wanting always more, especially more from one another than we can ever get. Prometheanism then goes on after this denial of the defects in human existence to seek power. Not collective power for humanity, but power for the individual. The individual is to be a little Napoleon crowning himself, stealing himself against the vulnerabilities of human life. Prometheanism is a false response. First, because it denies the truth about the incurable defects in the human condition. And second, because it drives us into an anxious struggle for power that limits our capacity to rise to a higher form of life. What then is the way forward? What is the escape? How are we to preserve our orientation to the future without embracing these false solutions? The only solution I have come to think is the enhancement of life, of our vitality a way of reconciling the orientation to the future with the transformation of life right now. Life is the supreme good. And the orientation to the future has to be conceived and enacted in such a way that it enhances rather than denies the imperative of vitality. That basic idea will lead us into a reorientation of our existence and into a reconstruction of society. 